Okay, so welcome to this next video in the playlist on voltage gated ion channels. In this video, what we're going to discuss is um, how um, how calcium actually triggers uh, neurotransmission, uh, how it actually really causes the release of neurotransmitter into the synaptic cleft. So we're going to discuss the snare proteins, basically. Okay, so let's say this is an axon terminal here, and we have a vesicle here which we want to bind to the membrane. So, uh, basically, uh, once vesicles have been filled with neurotransmitter, they are taken to the presynaptic membrane and docked there. So a bunch of proteins connect uh, the uh, synaptic vesicle to the presynaptic membrane. And then, uh, these snare proteins are also involved in then sensing the rise in calcium and responding to it by fusing the vesicle membrane uh, with the presynaptic membrane to release the neurotransmitter contents into the synaptic cleft. Okay, so the first thing we want to study is uh, how to actually dock this vesicle onto the plasma membrane. And basically, there are a number of important proteins involved in that. So, one of the proteins is a protein called synaptobrevin. So, we'll draw two synaptobrevin brevin molecules here. And synaptobrevin basically consists of a membrane spanning region uh, which is hydrophobic and the carboxy tail of, uh, of a synaptobrevin is, faces into the vesicle. So uh, again it will be over here as well. Um, like that. Uh, and then outside what it has is effectively an alpha helix like so. Uh, so it's basically a polypeptide structure with a hydrophobic membrane spanning domain and the carboxyl terminus in the within the vesicle, and then a alpha helix that uh, then um, faces into the cytosol. Okay, now uh, this protein is called synaptobrevin, and it's within uh, the membrane of the synaptic vesicle. So this is synaptobrevin. Okay, and then there are other important proteins that are in the membrane, the presynaptic cell membrane, which interact with this synaptobrevin. Okay, so uh, one of those is uh, a protein called syntaxin. So, I'll put, uh, so we'll highlight synaptobrevin in pink here. Okay, so this is going to be synaptobrevin. So this pink one here. So this is synaptobrevin, and now what we want to draw is syntaxin. And syntaxin is basically a very similar protein uh, with an alpha helix, but now bonded, in, but now uh, implanted in the uh, presynaptic membrane rather than the uh, synaptic vesicle membrane. So you have this is syntaxin. So we've got two syntaxin molecules here. Okay, so this green one is a molecule called syntaxin. Syntaxin, and it again has a single alpha helix. And now finally, you have a molecule called SNAP25, which consists of two alpha helixes uh, bonded together like this. Okay, so uh, that orange one is finally SNAP25. Okay, um, so I'll just label that up. SNAP25. Okay, and basically, uh, these molecules are going to form complexes with one another. So if we now draw this uh, vesicle dot to the presynaptic membrane, what happens is that you have the, mem the presynaptic vesicle here, the synaptic vesicle here. Uh, here's the presynaptic membrane. And you end up with the synaptobrevin here with the SNAP25 here and uh, the syntaxin like that. And again, you have the same complex over here. Uh, so we've got two of them here. Okay, and then the SNAP25 in the middle like that. Right, uh, so let me just highlight it to make it clear again. So this is the synaptobrevin, which is the one that's in the synaptic vesicle membrane. Then we have the SNAP25, and this picture is slightly inaccurate because it should still obviously be it should still obviously have been implanted into the membrane. So I'll draw something to correct for that. Um, I want an orange highlighter that isn't going to um, make everything really messy. I don't think this is, yeah, this is just going to have to make it a horrible black-orange mess. I can't rectify that. Okay, so that's the SNAP25, and uh, here is the syntaxin in green. Okay, so though that whole complex there, this 
this complex here is known as a core complex. So the complex of syntaxin in green, SNAP25 in orange, and synaptobrevin. So this is known as a core complex. And it's through the formation of these core complexes that these synaptic vesicles are docked to the presynaptic membrane. So this basically holds them uh, against the presynaptic membrane, ready to uh, fuse with the presynaptic membrane uh, when calcium arrives. Okay, so let's say we have now had an action potential. Uh, that, as we know, uh, causes voltage-gated sodium channels to open, uh, which, allow sodium, which allow sodium into the cell. So this is sodium coming into the cell. Then that what happens is a, de uh, a vast depolarization up to plus 40 millivolts of the membrane, and that causes voltage-gated calcium channels to open and that allows calcium into the cell. So what we want to know is how does the calcium entering the cell lead to the fusion of this synaptic vesicle with this presynaptic membrane? Well, it involves a third protein, basically. And this protein is also in the synaptic vesicle, like so. Uh, and this protein is called, um, is called synaptotagmin. So this one is going to be synaptotagmin. Synaptotagmin. And basically, synaptotagmin has two major uh, uh, bits, two major sort of globules. And this one is called the C2A region, the C2A domain. And this one is called the C2B domain. And uh, C2B uh, basically wants to bind to syntaxin. So that will bind to syntaxin. Uh, but C2A is very, very important because basically, when calcium uh, enters the cytoplasm, calcium is going to bind to the C2A region, and when it does, C2A will then bind with phospholipids, so C2A is going to bind to phospholipids in this uh, presynaptic membrane, and that's going to pull the uh, synaptic vesicle closer and closer to the uh, phospholipid by there uh, of the uh, presynaptic membrane, and it's also going to cause disturbances in that membrane of the phospholipid by there which is going to make uh, the more likely to end up fusing together. So basically, it is believed that it is the C2A domain of synaptotagmin, which is very, very important in, sensing, in both sensing calcium and then responding to calcium uh, and then causing the, um, the synaptic vesicle to fuse with the presynaptic membrane. And basically, all of these proteins, synaptotagmin, synaptobrevin, SNAP25 and syntaxin, they are known as snare proteins, uh, which stands for uh, soluble soluble uh, N NF NSF um, 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 attachment receptors. Okay. So that's what snare protein stands for. So they're called snares. So for soluble NSF attachment receptors. And NSF stands for uh, n ethyl malimide uh, malimide um, uh, soluble factor. Okay, uh, so that's what the snare stands for, uh, soluble NSF attachment receptors, and the NSF there then stands for n e malamide soluble factor. Okay, uh, so um, there are two. The, the snare proteins are divided into two major types: the V snares and the T snares. Now, the V snares are the ones which are in the vesicle, are in the synaptic vesicle. So they are synaptobrevin and synaptotagmin. The T snares, standing for target snares, are the ones which are in the presynaptic membrane. So they are syntaxin in green and SNAP25 in orange.